Back in 1862, soldiers fighting in the American Civil War noticed something a little bit odd. Some of the injured had wounds that glowed blue, and those who did seemed to be more likely to survive. They called this weird light the Angel's Glow, and figured that it must be a sign of supernatural protection. And for more than a hundred years, nobody knew what caused it, until a pair of high school scientists figured it out. The soldiers with glowing wounds were being protected by bacteria. So as you might have heard, the American Civil War was a pretty rough place to be. New developments in weaponry made the battles especially bloody and brutal, resulting in extremely high numbers of casualties on both sides of the conflict. And the Battle of Shiloh was a particularly awful place to be. When the battlefields were cleared after two days of fighting, more than 23,000 people had been injured or killed, making it the bloodiest battle in American history up until that point. The medics on both sides weren't prepared to deal with so many injuries, so many wounded soldiers had to wait for days before they received medical attention. And as night fell on the first evening, some soldiers were surprised to discover that their wounds were glowing with a soft blue light. And it turned out that the soldiers whose wounds glowed in the dark were more likely to survive, and their injuries healed more cleanly than those who didn't, almost as if the blue light were protecting the soldiers who had it. In 2001, a 17-year-old named Bill Martin learned about the angel's glow and immediately thought of his mother's research on glowing bacteria for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Phyllis Martin was studying a type of bioluminescent bacteria known as Photorhabdis luminescens, which is found in soil and glows a pale blue. So Bill, along with his friend John Curtis, decided to see if the blue glow of the soldier's wounds could be related to the blue glow of the bacteria. They knew that P. luminescens has a mutualistic relationship with a roundworm, or nematode. But the worms have another important relationship in their lives. They're parasites of some insects. When these roundworms infect an insect, they vomit up any P. luminescens that they happen to have in their guts. Then the bacteria release toxins that kill the insect and enzymes that break down its tissues. So both the worm and the bacteria get a tasty dinner. The duo took their project to the lab where they examined different strains of the bacteria under different environmental conditions to figure out what suited them best. When they compared those results to the conditions described in historical records of the Battle of Shiloh, they found that the soil would have been a great place for both the bacteria and the worms to thrive. And if the bacteria were living in soldiers' wounds, that would explain the angel's glow and why the soldiers who had it were more likely to survive. So here's what they figured happened after the Battle of Shiloh. There would probably have been insects on or near the soldiers' wounds because they were outdoors on a battlefield. When nematodes infected those insects, P. luminescence would have released the toxins that normally help kill the insects. But in this case, those compounds would also have helped kill off other, more dangerous bacteria, protecting the soldiers from infection. Then the worms would have moved on in search of their next meal. And of course, that whole time the P. luminescence would be glowing, giving off a faint, ghostly blue light. So it seemed like Martin and Curtis had solved the mystery, but there was one more wrinkle to iron out. Normal human body temperatures are too hot for P. luminescence, so how could the bacteria be living on the soldiers' wounds? After some more thinking through, the pair came up with an answer. The battle occurred in early April in Tennessee, where it would have been pretty chilly at night. The wounded soldiers would have been sitting on the cold, damp ground waiting for medical care. And under those conditions, it wouldn't take long for hypothermia to set in, and the soldiers' lowered body temperature would have been just cool enough for P. luminescence to do their thing. Then, once the soldiers were found and brought indoors for care, their bodies would warm back up, killing off the P. luminescence before they could spread enough to become dangerous. These experiments and conclusions earned Bill Martin and John Curtis the top prize in the 2001 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. By combining their knowledge of history and microbiology and trying a few experiments of their own, they solved the 139-year-old mystery of the angel's glow. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow, which was brought to you by our patrons on Patreon, who recently helped us reach our goal of making seven videos per week on SciShow. Thank you so much for supporting us. If you want to help support this show, you can go to patreon.com slash scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. Lay their eggs in the flesh. And those eggs hatch into maggots, which start to eat the remains. That marks the transition into the active decay phase, which begins a week or two after death. As the